What's going on everyone? My name is Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the channel where we talk about business and technology. And man, if you thought the EV space was moving fast, well, we're going to be talking about some absolute bombshell game changers of news that have dropped this week. Now, I know some of you want the NEO perspective and selfishly, I do too. But you can't understand NEO's moves without understanding the entire chessboard. And right now, the chessboard's wild. So today we're breaking down four major stories that paint a picture of an industry in rapid transformation. We're talking about Neo's bold global expansion into new markets, Lee Otto's complete sales restructuring for the third time in three months, X Pong doing something that sounds absolutely insane on paper, and a Silicon Valley startup that just dropped what might be the world's first level four autonomous car that you can actually buy. Here's what I love about this moment that we're in right now. While everyone else is just talking about delivery numbers, we're seeing real strategic plays that'll determine who owns the next decade. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the big one. Neo announced that they're expanding into Singapore, Uzbekistan, and Costa Rica in 2025 and 2026. Now you might think, Obi, that's a weird mix of countries. But when you dig deeper, this is actually brilliant strategic thinking. First, Singapore. They're partnering with Weirns Automotive. And here's why this matters. Weirns has been around since 1906. We're talking about a company that survived two world wars, multiple economic crises, and has deep relationships with premium and luxury brands. That's not just a distributor, that's a seal of approval. But here's the kicker. Singapore will be the debut market for Neo's first right-hand drive model under the Firefly brand. Think about what this unlocks. Every right-hand drive market suddenly becomes accessible. We're talking about the UK, Australia, India, Japan. Massive markets that neo has been locked out of until now. Costa Rica is equally strategic. They're partnering with Horizontes Cello Azul, the country's largest EV distributor, and that marks Neo's first entry into the Americas. Now, Costa Rica isn't a huge market by itself, but it's a testing ground. If you can make it work in Costa Rica's challenging terrain and infrastructure, then you can make it work anywhere in Latin America and Uzbekistan. This is where people might scratch their head, but this is actually genius. Abu Sahi Motors has extensive influence in logistics, real estate, and automotive sales. Uzbekistan is the gateway to Central Asia, a region with 75 million people and growing energy wealth. Plus, the logistics expertise of Abu Sahi could be crucial for Neo's battery swap infrastructure expansion. Here's what's really interesting. Look at the product mix for each market. Costa Rica gets the full lineup. We're talking about the EL8, the EL6, the ET5 Touring, the Envo L60, and Firefly. Uzbekistan gets almost the same minus Firefly, but Singapore, just the right-hand drive Firefly. This tells me that Neo's being incredibly methodical. They're not just dumping products into markets. They're studying what each market can absorb and moving with the right foot forward. Now here's something that doesn't get enough attention but is crucial for understanding NEO's trajectory. Remember, NEO initially tried their direct sales model in Europe, same as in China. But last year, they shifted to what we call or what they call the light asset strategy, relying on distributors. Today's announcement proves that this strategy has worked. Since they made this shift, we've seen partnership announcements rolling out rapidly. And on August 14th, Firefly made its first deliveries in Norway in the Netherlands. Think about capital efficiencies here. Instead of having to build out infrastructure, hire local staff, navigate local regulations in every market, they're leveraging partners who already have the relationships, the real estate, and of course the service networks. This means faster expansion with lower risk. And here's the really telling detail. The recent announcement mentions that the Envo L60 will soon be available in overseas markets. The L60 just received a top safety score the same as Firefly and the Huawei Ido M9. That's not an accident. Neo's leading with safety first, testing the waters with their most proven product. Look, as someone who's bullish on Neo, what excites me isn't just the expansion, it's the execution. They're not making mistakes we've seen other Chinese brands make when going global. They're not rushing, they're not over promising, they're moving smart. Now let's talk about Li Auto because what's happening here is fascinating and truthfully concerning. They've adjusted their sales system three times within just the last six months, three times. Here's the timeline, in March they created five war zones, east, west, 
south, north, central. Each battle zone was shaped to handle their own sales, profit, and customer satisfaction scores. Classic decentralization play, right? Then in June, just three months later, they merged their entire sales and service group with their R&D and supply group into one smart car group under their president. Their president was Ma Dong Kui and the head of sales, he transferred to a consultant position. And now on August 14th, they're demolishing the five war zones entirely. They're going back to headquarters directly managing 23 regions across the country. So what's happening here? Well, Lee Auto launched their first pure electric EV, the i8, at the end of July with a price range of 321,800 Ren to 369,800 Ren. But here's what's getting interesting. Just seven days after launch, they completely restructured pricing into a single 339,800 Ren model. Think about the supply chain chaos that that created. They had to renegotiate with battery suppliers. They had to renegotiate with Horizon, an autonomous driving partner helping to make their chip. And that all happened in a matter of days. That either shows that they have an incredible amount of agility or a serious amount of desperation. And here's what I think really happened. Both uh, or Lee Auto sales teams were getting confused trying to sell range extended vehicles and pure electric vehicles at the same time. When your L8 and your I8 both start at the same price point, around 321,000 rent, how do you train salespeople to differentiate without cannibalizing your own product? The organizational reshuffling. It's not just about efficiency, it's about survival in a dual powertrain world. Speaking of moves that sound crazy but might be genius, let's talk about Xpong and Volkswagen. So get this, Xpong, a company who has never made a gasoline car, hell, their first range extended vehicle is still in the spy shot phase, just signed a deal to help Volkswagen integrate their electronic and electrical architecture into gas and hybrid vehicles. Read that again, a pure electric vehicle company is helping a traditional gas car company upgrade their gas car. This is their eighth partnership that Volkswagen announced in just two years. From strategic investments to mass production rollouts to multiple partnership agreements, these two are basically joined at the hip. From Volkswagen's perspective, this makes sense. Their Cariad software division has been well, let's just call it what it is, a disaster. Multiple stories of failed over-the-air updates, chunky interfaces, they need help fast. But from Xpong's position, it's brilliant position. They're not just competing in the EV space anymore. They're becoming a technological backbone for traditional automotive companies. They're the arms dealer in the EV revolution who's playing both sides and selling to both sides. Here's a strategic insight. Xpong realizes that intelligence isn't exclusive to electric vehicles. In the Chinese market, smart car features are becoming standard across the automo automotive market in general. For Volkswagen, by partnering with Xpong, they're expanding their TAM, their total addressable market. But the risk is that some people are worried that this might dilute Xpong's vision and value proposition. But I see it differently, the partnerships giving them the resources to be able to scale and accelerate their core EV business while building um, a licensing business that drives more revenue for the for the company. All right, last story here, but this might be the most significant for the long term. Tensor, a Silicon Valley startup, just announced a robocar, claiming to be the world's first personally owned level four autonomous vehicle. With deliveries starting in 2026 to the US, the UAE, and Europe. Now, before you roll your eyes at another autonomous driving promise, let me tell you why this is different. This car has over 100 sensors, 30 37 cameras, 5 LiDARs, 11 radars, 22 microphones, 10 ultrasonic sensors, 3 IMUs, 16 collision detectors, 8 water level sensors, 4 tire pressure monitors, and even a smoke detector. The steering wheel can be folded away and replaced with a screen. That's not a gimmick, that's a statement that this car genuinely does not need any human intervention. Here's what's interesting, Tensor is actually the evolved form of Auto X, which used to operate thousands of robo taxis in Shenzhen before withdrawing from the Chinese market. So this isn't vaporware from a random startup. This is a company with real operational experience and autonomous drive. They're partnering with VinFast for manufacturing, which is interesting because VinFast has been building production capacity and looking for differentiated products. Now, why does this matter for the broader EV discussion? Because if level four autonomous driving becomes available
available to consumers in 2026. It changes the entire value proposition of vehicle ownership. Suddenly the question isn't about electric versus gas anymore. The question becomes, do I even need a car anymore? This could accelerate the shift to mobility as a service model, which actually benefits companies like Neo with their battery as a service approach. If fewer people own cars but use them more intensively, you need more efficient battery swapping and service network. Anyways, that's it. That's all the stories that I have for you guys in today's episode. This was the uh, Monday episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below and click the notification bell icon. Also, share the video. All those things really do go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us to grow and reach a broader audience. If you found this video um, informative, useful, insightful, educational, at the very least entertaining, make sure you do those things and stay tuned for the next installment of the CF Podcast. Thanks for watching. This is Obi signing off. Goodbye.